All right. My apologies. Hope I'm back. Hope you folks are still there with me. My apologies. It's <clears throat> just let me know, folks. I see one, three. Do we go to six? All right, Sean. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. This, I, I tell you, man. Gray, hey, man. Appreciate you sticking in there, bud. Sean, thanks, man. It, man, I don't know about where y'all live at, but it, it, it's it's crazy how this stuff happens. It, it Scott, man, appreciate you coming back, man. Sorry about that. Um, it, it's insane how this stuff goes down. Uh, we have a uh, we have a college here. It, it's you know it's tremendous. It is hey Michael. Um, it's really disappointing on how um, how bad. Hey, Dale says the wind is blowing too. Ah, uh, oh Lord help us. Uh, but anyway, I'll let a few more get on here, and we'll kind of get back to what I'm going over. Of course. Um, Hopefully, all will be good. It'll be up on the uh, YouTube page. And and if you folks would like, um, you know, I can do a pretty in-depth uh, video um, for you folks there and go over this here as well and maybe get in, zoomed in a little bit closer using my Filmic Pro app and my Polar Pro stuff and um, see, see if I can get that dialed in. But, yeah, boy, Pete, man, appreciate you folks there, Sean. I know <laughs> it's something in it. Mountains of North Carolina must be just like the mountains in West Virginia. You know what I mean? Joe, appreciate you there. But see a lot more people hopping back on there. And I appreciate that. Y'all back on. Thanks, David. Absolutely. So, um, so where was that? So that was one way to prep your feather. Like I said, was give it the old proverbial haircut, as they say. Um, there, some people say that. Um, I've got one here. Let's see what I've got lying over here. You can see what I do. So this particular um, feather here, you see now what I've got is I've got this the shiny side facing you folks. So when I wrap this feather, this the shiny side is going to wrap forward. But when I prepped it, I took and I pulled off those bottom barbules. Okay. And the reason why I did that is... It, when I tie that on the hook, it's just going to be a much cleaner. It's just a much neater tie. And I'm going to strip off my kind of my tie in point there. And there we go. That's what we're going to do. Now, the other thing that I, I, I skipped, but I, I didn't, it was unintentional. I didn't mean to, but it's selecting, so, selecting, good gosh, selecting your size of your feather. Now, you being the Bob Ross at your vice, that allows you the ability to, to use what feather you want to use. So understand that depending on the size of the feather you use, it's going to call, it could cause that fly to ride cattywonky in the water or it could cause it to set low in the water. Just really depends on the look you're trying to get out of that particular pattern and for whatever reason there. Slow down on that sweet tea. I tell you, it's, it's, it's good stuff, guys. It's good stuff. Um, yeah, sweet tea's good. Sweet tea's good. Real good stuff. But anyway, so I'm going to show you a few flies here right quick. So the first one I'm going to show you is going to be this Adam Variant fly. So if we look at this particular fly, let me get a... What I want to use to hold this here right quick. I just had it. All right, beautiful. Here we go. All right, so... Great fly, Fred and Aline Hall. But if we look here at the back end of this particular fly pattern, you see this real, real tiny grizzly fly. And if, if we just selected the feather uh, as large as we did up here at the front near the uh, hackle tip wings, um, you know, this fly is going to ride entirely differently. So what you have to do is, is you make sure that you're selecting the right size feather for the type of fly you're trying to tie and, and the look and the performance you're trying to get out of it. So let's think about if I'm tying a size 12 caddis, okay? A size 12 caddis, and I'm going to grab this palmer here right quick. This is real similar. I have to compensate for the body. So if I've dubbed the body or I've got peacock curl, 
if I go with a size 12 hackle, that could cause that, that hackle to be really, really big. So you have to compensate for that. So you may have to downsize that hackle uh, feather and maybe go down to a 14 to get it to where it's supposed to set properly for you. Um, so understanding if you're tying a size 12, you may be using a 14, um, you know, hackle feather. Or if it's a super, super thin body, maybe a thread body, you might be using a size 12. That's one thing that uh, that I do see mistakes. You see some stuff with some crazy, crazy uh, size feathers on them, but they're not compensated for the amount of dubbing on the body. And it does make a difference in that particular fly. So hopefully that right there uh, will help you a little bit with that. So what I'm going to attempt to do here in just a moment is I'm going to put my uh, jaws here in the particular vise right quick. And I'm going to grab my trusty, dusty old Allen wrench out of my Norvice tool deck there. Hopefully you folks can see that okay. And I'm just going to grab a hook. And just for the, the purpose of, of showing you a couple of things right here, I'm just going to slide the old hook in there. Obviously, that's a really big hook. That's just a really big nymph hook um, there. But the point is I want to show you a couple of things when you're tying your feathers on here that can make a difference in and what happens with those particular feathers. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of come in here. Let's lay down a thread base just so I have something to work on. And to be honest with you, it's kind of difficult for me to see here right quick. So the first feather I'm gonna grab, and, and this here, hey, this is one of those long saddle hackle feathers. Now look, I, I've tied three flies off this particular feather right here. So what a great value that is. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do it. I'm going to strip off the bottom fibers, just like so. You can see a little twist in there. It happens, but the stem is very, very supple, okay? I know what they say that, you know, they've almost got eliminated. I don't agree with it because it does happen, okay? Faster than a NASCAR pit crew. I hear you. That would be called 88 out the gate. All right, so I've got the shiny side facing you, which means I have stripped the bottom barbules off. And this is gonna be the stem that contacts the hook, okay, the hook shank. So what I'm going to attempt to do, I'm gonna, I am going to spin my thread counterclockwise. The reason being is I want my thread to jump backwards and grab that stem just, just like so. And I've got my light turned down so I don't blind you folks, okay? So I'm just going to lay that down. I'm gonna put in a half hitch. Keith, man, appreciate you uh, watching us there for sure. Dave, appreciate it. And um, so what I'm gonna use now is I'm gonna use the rotating feature of the Norvice. And this is another, gosh, it mates up so well because the, the ability you have with the Norvice and with these, uh, these saddle hackle feathers, uh, you, you know, you, it just, it just goes together like peanut butter and jelly. Um, so you see, I'm actually working my way up side by side up, up through there. And you see how clean that looks, um, up, up through there. See how vertical that is. I want to bring this back over and we're the part of that reason is, is you're not trapping any of those bottom fibers on there. Okay. So those bottom fibers, if you didn't necessarily strip off that bottom part of the hackle fibers, you're gonna start trapping them and causing them to go all different directions, which honestly does add float floatability to, you know, to the particular pattern. But if you think about some of those, uh, got those Instagram flies, right? Okay, the Insta famous flies. Um, you know, a lot of times this is how you're seeing those flies tied, whether it's a sofa pillow or a stimulator or, some kind of caddis or a mayfly, super, super clean. You can see that really, really clean and how those go straight up and down for you. Um, and it'll fish. Really like those Catskill, you know, ties up up there in the, in the New York area, of course. So that's one way to do it. So let me grab same color feather that I've got lying over here. And I just keep stuff right here on my base, okay? And this time, ooh, ooh, there went some, uh, there went some simple fly flash. I want to hang on to that. So I want to cut this here, uh, like Forrest and Jenny. They, yeah, that's right, peas and carrots. No doubt about that for sure. 
uh, but smaller, no problem. So I'm just gonna strip that off. And that's the way I've always done it, folks, is stripped it off. If you wanna give a haircut, give a haircut. Once again, I'm going to spin my thread counterclockwise, get that tied in there right quick. I'm just gonna run this up here. What I want you to notice though in this particular situation is when I wrap this here, you know, you're gonna see the see those hackle fibers go in many different directions. And actually this stem here is actually trying to twist on me here a little bit. But if you see that right there, it's a is it safe to say it's it's a bushier tie? Um it'd be great maybe on a caddis something that you need a lot of floatability to it right there. Uh, but it's here side by side, it's real easy to see the difference in how that's going to show up on your hook there for sure. So we reach in here with our scissors, we've got that tied off. And two really good comparisons between stems, uh, the barbules stripped off the bottom, non-stripped off the bottom, okay? Um, here we have um, woolly worms, you know, brown, black, they predict our weather. You may have them where you're at. Great way to make a woolly worm pattern is literally take a fly, uh, a fly hook this size, take you a brown hackle, take you a black hackle, just tie it in like I did right here with this one. Um, just mess up your colors side by side, the whole hook shank thing floats like a dang cork uh, and you will catch fish on this, uh, no doubt about it. But it, it, it floats really, really well. You know, match it up with your favorite floatant, whatever that is. I'm not here to sway you one way or the other. That's your call, not mine. So I'm just going to reach in there do that right quick. And I'm going to set this one here to the side. Um, I'm like you, Sean. I, I use both of them for different flies. I, absolutely. I think that's a smart call. Um, and that's really what you should do. No doubt about that at all, uh, as well. You you should be kind of mixing it up and catering it toward what you are what you're trying to achieve. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to grab another hook is, uh, hey, Sharon, uh, appreciate you tuning on there, is I'm going to take and I'm going to put a parachute post on here because I do get asked about this. And so let me get that thread base there started. Um, waka waka. That's what those Magnum hubs do right there, folks. That's what those Magnum hubs is. If you have been apprehensive about purchasing Magnum hubs, stop it. Just do it. It is worth it. All right, let me see if I can find some uh, pair of post something here. Okay, here we go. All right, perfect. This will work. Got some good old bonding cord here right quick. So I'm gonna use this material here and uh, maybe I, I, I should do an event too or video on uh, tying with calf tail, calf body um, as well because some of that stuff there is um, can be intimidating to folks. Um, calf tail is a great material to, to tie with, often called a kip, K-I-P, kip tail. Roger, thanks for uh, tuning in there. Dave, appreciate that to comment. Uh, differences between your tying over here and then other, like in Scotland, absolutely. And at the end of the day, the ultimate goal is have a quality tie fly that's going to fool the fish. I mean, that's that's it. And And with today's modern technologies, we're able to learn from a lot of great people out there. And I'm thankful for that. Uh, even as wonky as technology can be sometimes, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's great to, to see what other people do. So I'm just going to tie in this bonding cord here right quick. Got that. I'm just going to reach in here and tie that off, set that to the side. Uh, Michael, thanks for hopping in there with us. And this here would be where you would actually, you know, have that ramp going down. And for me, I don't have a good background here to see contrast wise. Um, this is black on black. <laughs> Sounds like an owl, doesn't it? Um, so I'm gonna lift this post up here right quick and I'm gonna start, and I'm just gonna start making some loop, loose wraps just to post this up, cause this is gonna be the base for the um, for our hackle. You notice right there in my Norvice, you can index that in a couple of different positions, but I like to keep my tension knob on the tight section there so I have complete control of where I'm going with this guy. Uh, another trick you can do here too. Thanks, Rick, man. Sorry about that, bud. Hey, Adam, how you doing, bud? Hope hope all's going well down in the where you're at. Is that a Red Sox hat on here, man? Adam, you got a Red Sox hat, dude, man. Seriously. All right. Anyway, just giving you a hard time, bud. Good seeing you. Appreciate you. Um, so anyway, so we've got our parachute post. 
You can do a couple things at this point. If you want to reinforce this, you can use a little bit of UV resin. Um, you can use a little bit of, uh, you know, head cement. That's perfectly fine. Do what you want to do. Just to understand there's a lot of things you can do to this post in here to make it a little bit more durable for you um, over time. So I'm going to take one of these uh, one of these feathers here once again. This is one of the it's it's one of the March Brown dyed, and I am going to take and I'm going to strip the bottom barbules off. Once again, oh that's a little small. Hang on there just a second, folks. Uh, let me get a little bigger one here. I'm just going to grab one. Look at how long this bad cuss is. Look at that. Whoo! This is longer than some of the snakes out there. You know what I mean? So I'm just gonna snip off down here. Yeah, perfect. Look, look at that barbule count there, right there. Look at that barbule count. But I'm going to take and I'm going to strip off these bottom fibers because when I tie, when I tie my parachute, uh, my hackle in, I I want it to to be to where the shiny side is down and and the dull side is facing up. That's the side the fish sees. Not that they're probably counting to see what it looks like. Um, I just like it better personally. You do what you want to do. I've seen it go both ways. I'm not for sure if it affects uh, a flex if it if it affects floatability performance of the fly. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tie that stem in here in the side of the my hook shank, and then I'm going to take and I'm holding my stem parallel to that post, and I'm tying that bad boy in. If you can notice right through there, just like that. So I've got that tied in, boom, 88 out the gate. I'm going to take, put in a half hitch. That will save anything that goes wrong on there. And my goal here is, let's see, if, all right, see how that rotated? I wanna, rot I wanna twist that. So see how that rotated? So my bare stem is now going up against that post, right? So I like to turn my Norvice at an angle and start making those wraps, side-by-side -side wraps, except here, it's not working where I want it to, there we go, get it, get underneath, it's wanting to go back up top. But anyway, get that to go down just like so, just like that, 88 out the gate. I'm gonna have a big old mess here in just a minute, folks. And what I demonstrated was the way I wasn't wanting to demonstrate. It shows the hackle fi fibers going down with the shiny side up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring my thread back over. I'm going to capture underneath. And one of the things you can do in a Norvice is if you rotate this like so and use your, <laughs> you can actually wrap underneath your thread just like that if you want to. And that's exactly what I did, uh, which is pretty cool. I'm just gonna get those fibers out of the way, do some reverse wraps in there like that. I'm going to grab my bobbin, I got it because I gotta do a reverse hitch in there, just like that. And we're all secure. So in this particular case here, you see that my um it's kind of cupped like this here. Okay. Uh, appreciate that, Jody. Uh so it's kind of cupped that way. Um, I typically tied in the other way. I just messed up. So um, that's no problem. Things happen, all right? So let's just put in a couple half hitches. Whammo. Just like that. Let's get rid of that hook. Let me see if I can find another hook. I've got bunches of them. All right. Oh, here's a hook. We're going to grab one. I know a lot of folks are intimidated by tying parachute flies, but parachute, uh, my gosh, at the end of the day, is probably the number one dry fly out there, like a like a parachute atom. I don't care where you're at, like a parachute atom just works, right? It, tell me if I'm wrong. Comment down below if if if, if you <laughs> if you have another go to fly. But man, a parachute atom, 14 or a 16. At the end of the day, if nothing else is working, it works, right? So I'm gonna put in this hook here. I'm gonna grab my thread. Hold, hang on there a second. Let's just change thread colors there too. Um, as well. Let me just grab. Give us a bit more contrast if you folks are out with that. All these threads that I am using, they are Semperfly. Um, I do use them and uh, I demo this at shows all the time. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, um, yeah, I mean, that's tricky. Uh, you know, it. The more you do it, the better you get, and you're gonna find a way that works best for you. That's that's the only thing I can tell you. 
Um, let's, let's think about this for a minute. Let, let's think about, um, you know, we saw a baseball cap, a Red Sox, but let's, let's talk about Mr. Greg Maddox. Greg Maddox worked at his, his craft for a long, long time. And he developed the grips on the baseball to get that ball to dance any way he want, wanted to, to, to move, right? He wasn't a power pitcher, but he worked at his craft. And it's no different here. The more that you work at whatever technique works best for you, the better you will get at it and the more comfortable you get at it. And, and that's what it takes. And, and, and if you don't like how it turns out, you know what you do? You keep a razor blade at your desk and you cut the thing apart and you start all over again. It's, it's, it's not, a, not a big deal um, at all. Um, so I want to take more of this here, bonding cord, whatever you want to use, pair of posts. There's all kinds of stuff out there. Use what you got. Whammo, 88 out the gate. Trim it. Lock it down. Boom, boom, boom. Post it up in the front. And we're going to come in here like this and get to going. Once you kind of get that bottom part started, then you can flip it. Oops. You get to go in too fast sometimes. Pull you out some, and just start posting it up, just like so, okay? That's all you gotta do. That's really key for any parachute fly that you tie is you have that post, you know, secure, okay? So there we go. Derek, appreciate you watching. Eric as well, Derek and Eric, all right, cool. Okay, so, since I did this wrong a while ago, I'm going to take it this time, cut it. There we go. And here, because I want it to, to flip the opposite way, I'm going to take off the top side. Once again, shiny side facing you, dull side facing me. They use convex concave. You know what I mean? Too smart for me. Too smart for big mess. Okay, all right, beautiful. Thank you folks for watching too, man. I really appreciate that and hanging in there with technology. So many things with the vice, they just make it so great. Yeah, no, no doubt about that for sure. That's it's a tool, man. I don't care what you do in this world. You could be an IT person. You could be a, a sound engineer. You, you could be all kinds of stuff there. And, you know, having the right tools for the job and understanding how to use those tools is what makes all the differences in the world. Uh, once again, going to parachute it up all the same way. Just like so, I'm going to secure my thread there. I'm going to put in a half inch, but I'm actually going to take my thread and let it drop that way. And this time, as I wrap it, dull side will be up. Thanks for that link, man, on dying. That's awesome. Um, and so it's going to ride this particular direction. But if you notice down, see how much cleaner that is in through there? Beautiful. I just can't. There we go. Sorry if Jill the belly scratcher starts barking. It's because a little big mess and them are coming in. Okay. Beautiful. Just like that. I'm going to take my thread. I've got it captured. Just like so. And there we go. Just like that. We are all set. You can come in. You can do it that way. You can tie it on the post if you want to. That's where you're in charge. You can do it any way you want to. Okay just like so. So there we go. Reach in there, snip that off, just whatever. Fantastic. That's all there is to it, folks. That is a parachute post, but I want you to see how using that, um, golly, you know, that saddle hackle, um, you know, it's, it's easier than trying to use that, use a cape for sure. No doubt about that. So, so there we go. So if you folks have any questions on that, let me know. I'm not really for sure what time it's getting to be. But, um, yeah, I appreciate you folks joining in there. We're kind of hitting about that hour mark for sure. So, um, any questions there? Yeah, just let me know there right quick. I don't know how well y'all can see that. Yeah, yeah, the belly scratcher. Where you at, Jill? There she is. Here, here Jill. Here. That looks like a size 10 or 8 hook. Yeah, it's it's a big nymph hook for sure. Um, and it's just good for um, for demonstration purposes, for sure. Um, here's here's the famous Bella Scratcher, um, for sure. Here, You see the colors I was talking about, though, man? Look at the colors on her fur, man. That's, would that not make some great-looking great looking flies for sure there? But uh, anyway, 
Hope you found this informative. I enjoy doing this for you folks. Um, I like to do a lot more, but you see how we kind of go through the uh, ah, technology, man. You know, we were rocking and rolling. We were 88 out the gate. Man, we were, we were hotter than a Georgia firecracker, but uh, the whammo, what, we just got shut down and bing, bing, boom. Yeah, I appreciate all the great comments right there. Good for dubbing. Oh, abs absolutely. N no doubt about that for sure. And uh, uh, before I forget, big, big shout out to Casey Miller. I think uh, Lordy Lordy, Casey's 40 or something like that for sure uh, out there. I just want to let you uh, thank her. She's actually the one behind the scenes who sets all these up for us. Uh, she's the one that makes us the editor, administrator, all that stuff like that um, for sure. No doubt about that. Acid dial. I don't know about that. I think it had to be pretty, pretty good on the feathers for sure. Um, no doubt about that. Uh, don't want those feathers to, to fall apart there. Um, you know, people even dye the, uh, you know, deer hair, elk hair, things like that too. But I've never done it. it you know, if there's an ambassador out there for Norvice that has done that, that might be a, a great, great type of video for us. Or maybe like a couple of, you know, series so we can kind of understand how that goes down also. So that's cool. Um, Anyway, from us, you know, you, you know, our family to, to y'all's, we, we definitely want to miss, wish all y'all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We say Merry Christmas here in the South in the Messer household. So, um, and, uh, uh, you know, if you're, if you're not tying flies and you're looking to start tying flies or you're looking to upgrade your vice, definitely consider the Norvice fly tying system. A lot of great information out there from your dealers um, as well as the online resources that you have. Uh, commercial plier puts you on the acid dye. Well, that's interesting for sure. That's that's awesome. Uh, I, maybe, yeah, you know, that's where I don't know. I'm uneducated. So who am I to be an expert for sure? Um, yeah, that's that's cool. That's where these events are great for people to share that information and knowledge. There's some great books out there that are old. And I got one, the, uh, oh, geez, about a month or so ago. That was from 1941, I think. Uh, what a great resource this this book, Herders. It's from Herders, uh, paperback book. And with that being said, let's not forget about the Army Navy game coming up this coming Saturday, and also the 80th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor that we all will never forget for sure and how it shaped our country. So anyway, um, Jody, I'll, I'll shout out at you uh, tomorrow when I'm at the shop shop there. Okay, and. Um, all right, we will catch you folks next time and be on the lookout for this here on YouTube. Y'all have a great evening and y'all take care.